Okay, the ear does two jobs. It does balance and then it does hearing. In vertebrates, it's very, very evolutionarily conserved, the structure. So it's very, very similar in frogs and fish and humans, especially the balance part. Um, it's the hearing part that's a little bit different. And so, you know, the frogs are very similar. So they provide a model for how we study. And the nice thing about frogs and fish is, remember they're, they're, they're aquatic. They, they're, the eggs are laid in the water. And so you get all of development, you know, as opposed to a human develops inside a mom. what genes are necessary to form a zebrafish embryo because it's closer to their vertebrate like us so it would be more relevant for human diseases and in fact they've discovered a fair number of uh, mutations that mimic human diseases in zebrafish so it has that advantage also the zebrafish is transparent throughout the frog isn't transparent until later stages so that's a harder for imaging while the zebrafish is very very transparent now it's harder to do the embryological manipulations i spoke about in frogs and zebrafish so you know you take the trade off and you take the strengths of each system and you use them so what we're interested in understanding is sort of how uh, there's two things that we're interested in. we're interested in um, how the ear gets patterned during development and how those defects in patterning relate to the malformations that we see in humans born with congenital deafness. Is there a correlation? So we can see if, if this particular gene or this particular region is impacted, maybe that's the same one being impacted in humans with similar inner ear malformations. So that's the goal of that project. In the zebrafish, we're interested in the inner ear, this flap of skin goes on to form many cell types. You know, there's the sensory cell, there's the neurons that wire the ear into the brain. And there we're interested in, in how does a cell, you know, that's sort of not defined at a particular that early stage development decide to become a sensory cell, a neuron, or any of the dozens of other cell types that are forming in the ear. And we're particularly interested in that decision early on in development and the genes that are involved in deciding uh, what cell type to form as well as putting in those sensory organs into the right part of the ear. It's very important, you know, not just to regenerate hair cells, but it's important to put them in the right place. And that's what we're trying to understand is how they get positioned in the right place. It would be nice to be able to do auditory tests in, uh, in the fish and the frog. So we can start looking at how the development relates to auditory functions and, and not only in the periphery, but also in the central nervous system because it would be a very, very powerful tool. Now fish do hear, they don't hear as well as we do, but they do hear. And uh, the problem is, you know, it's difficult to do hearing tests on fish, as you can imagine. They don't cooperate very well. They can't tell you their perceptions of things. And so there are, there are people that do ABRs on fish. You have to wait till they're about 12 days old to do that. Um, so that's a, and that's pretty late I mean, when we're thinking of fish. You know, they take about a month to develop from fertilization to adulthood. And that's part of the advantage of them. They're very, very fast. You know, the ear begins to form at 15 hours after fertilization. You know, that makes it instead of weeks in, uh, in mammals. So you have that advantage. And so we'd like to try and do some of these uh, types of tests and sort of see if we can make behavioral tests that can tell where the fish is actually discriminating different frequencies of sound, for example. And that involves a lot of uh, cooperation with engineers and other people in the Institute and other scientists, other places, to sort of see how sound procession is affected in water. And so that's part of the aspect of it that we're interested in sort of not just expanding into more of the development and the molecular aspect of it, but also trying to take it to the next step, you know, to the, the brain, central nervous system, and then the behavioral aspects.